Good morning. I hope you're having a fantastic day today. Dave K here today for our last fun-filled travel day around Geneva, uh, or around Switzerland, excuse me. Unfortunately, I uh, got here this morning to the train station and we just missed um, a train to take me to Bern. You know, I want to go to Bern today. I actually want to try to squeeze in as much as possible, um, but it's about 5.15 in the morning here. Um, and was woken up early. And, you know, there's been pros and cons with Airbnbs, um, but the heater has been a little loud. So I was woken up early, so I'm like, let me go make the most of the day. Um, was trying to figure out how to get uh, to Bern. Again, earlier in the morning, there's less train connectivity. So that's been one of the challenges. So it seems like I'll be waiting for about 45 minutes or so for the next train. Meanwhile, we'll take a look around the airport, hang out a bit, maybe see if there's any open food throughout the morning here, um, and get to know Geneva Airport train station a bit better. Take a look around the train station here at the airport this morning. You have the flights, disembarking flights and all that, and then you have the, uh, the trains as well. And again, just, uh, just missed our train here, so might be waiting for a bit for the next one. Change of plans instead of waiting about 45 minutes. The Gruyere train is only about 10 or 15 minutes out, so it's about half an hour earlier than the other one. May as well try to see if we can see Gruyere first. Make the most of the morning, why don't we? So, here we are with our own train this morning. No surprise, at 5.20 in the morning. The train will leave at 5.30, of course, but uh, I think I will plug in my phone. Don't forget to bring your uh, adapters, because that's very helpful on the buses, so I'll have enough power to make it through the day. And the wash closet is just that way, maybe helpful later as well. And now in Vive, looking for the 213 bus. So change it over. A little bit trickier to get to Gruyere, but it'll be worth the experience. We got this bus and then another train, because it doesn't connect into all the other ones. It's good to know. Here we are in Veve, maybe the only look we get at it. Look at those beautiful Christmas decorations up that way. It's nice. Some people walking around this morning. Not sure what they're up to this early. And this might be my stop, which is awfully convenient. Not my bus, but my stop, maybe. All right, y'all. So I missed the bus this morning. I was very confused on where it's supposed to pick me up. I'll try to ask a few people. Uh, it seems like it's further down this way. So I'll be an hour later getting into Gruyere. 20 minutes later on this bus, and the train is an hour later. Uh, and it's cold, but we're going to get there. All right, y'all. Welcome to the train station. <laughs> I was hoping for a Migros. Maybe a McDonald's, something warm to sit in for a while, but nope. We do have, which I'm super thankful for, this little box here. I'm gonna go sit in the little box. <laughs> Warmer glass box. But wow, this is like one track. I think this is the smallest train station I've been to. But uh, it's, it's not really that warm in here, so we'll see what we can do. Try to stay warm and see if anything's around, but I really don't think so. Didn't seem like a whole lot on the ride either. That being said, we get to enjoy the beautiful winter climates. You know, I think I've seen enough snow already. I just started, and I'm pretty much done with it. This restaurant doesn't open until 9, uh, but there's a dinner, which is like a grocery store, opens at 7.30. I think I'll walk in there just for the warmth, and hopefully for some bathrooms. Right, around the corner we are to the dinner satellite. Again, just a little grocery store. I'm hoping for a little bit of warmth and a little bit of a uh, bathroom would be great but I'm not betting on it. All right, here we have chorizo sandwich. We're across from the dinner. It's a nice little uh, sandwich stock. We'll make our way. All right, lucked out with the sandwich shop here, to be honest. Uh, sat for like 25 minutes or so, sitting there eating that sandwich. I'm glad we had a chance to, uh, to get something. It's Zillman right here next to the dinner. Open nice and early. <laughs> hey, Zillman. Good work on that. But they don't really speak German, in case you thought that was a German uh, title. Right around the corner, in about five minutes or eight minutes, is the bus, the train, the Zug. So we're going to make our way, finally. 
All right, on our way we are. We'll see ya, Vive. Thanks for having us. Ladies and gentlemen, and friends and y'all, welcome to Gruyere, the medieval town of Gruyere. It is snowing, if you can't see the snow behind me. We are gonna check out a bit of Gruyere before we do Bern later today. There are a few really cool highlights in Gruyere. I was actually like, man, I can't do it all. There's an awesome chocolate facility to see. There's a um, castle to see. There is uh, the old town, of course. And I have to see an alien bar. So just you wait and see that alien bar. I'm so excited for that. Um, so those are a couple of the highlights here. Although I'm not sure we'll make the chocolate factory. Again, question of timing. We'll see how things go. But we made it. Most things should be opening up because it's nine something now. Let's get to it. Get to Gruyere and stay as warm as possible. Starting us off with their subway station. I've got to say, even this subway station is quite nice. Although, I think I'm probably going this way. We'll find out. Here we are, y'all, in the old town of Gruyere. No, we're actually just passing by a grocery store in Gruyere. But at the beginning of our walk, having some issues with my cell connection. Oh, there's a chocolatierie. Actually, I should check this out before I go anywhere else, right by the train station. This one's on the list of things to see. So I got to at least take a peek. All right, it looks like the chocolate shop must be closed, but that's okay. We are walking it for now. The bus is gonna be another 20 minutes, so I may just walk it, um, but it's really cold, <laughs> in case you couldn't tell, so. Doing what we can to stay warm. Try to duck in any store along the way. Is this the grocery store? Oh, great, we're gonna duck in the grocery store. La Maison de Gruyere. This is the cheese restaurant and um, and factory, I believe. So this would be cool to take a peek. First, take a quick peek in the cheese cellar here. This is really, really cool. Uh, it's, it's a thought in terms of a cheese option here in Gruyere, but I um, only have so much time and heard this one is all right. Oh, is this a guide? <laughs> this is for us? Maybe, that's uh, helpful for sure. Here is the menu for the restaurant here. Uh, in French. <laughs> so we'll see if they have it in English and we'll take a quick peek. Certainly like the Swiss theming everywhere, the chairs and things like that. Uh, yeah, I'm not sure. We'll, we'll see uh, how this goes, see what they got. All right, and here is what we got right now. I could get a hot chocolate, hypothetically, or a coffee type. Um, or maybe I'll keep moving. I have not decided yet. We shall see. Here is another look around at some of the other theming, like the wall decals. Very cool. And down the hall is that little shop, so I want to check that out as well. All right, and here are your uh, postcards, things like that, in this little shop area. We'll take a look around. I really like seeing uh, <laughs> Monopoly, Gruyere Monopoly. That's fun. And look at, oh, they've got Kaye chocolate, which makes sense, too, because that factory is here, too. That was the one I was going to look at. Okay, so they had some sweatshirts and shirts and other items there, too. But I wanted to make sure I caught this bus into town. <laughs> Save myself walking 15 minutes in the cold, although it's not snowing anymore. Uh, we'll see if the 260 picks me up here. There's a sign that says something in, uh, I think it's got German there actually as well as French. So we'll see if I can <laughs> read it in German. Um, probably not. I'll use my translate uh, and we'll see how the bus goes, if it picks us up, hopefully. And there it is. I timed exiting the shop decently well. It's about 60 seconds early, maybe. Uh, waiting for the bus to come back around and we will be on our way. And I found out I got on the wrong bus here. So right now, we're taking a scenic stroll heading in the wrong direction. 
uh, we'll catch the bus coming back, hopefully pretty soon. Um, but it is a little confusing, again. Uh, waited for a while. That wasn't the bus that I saw come around, but a different one that came to pick us up. Yeah, it's confusing. <laughs> you know, continuing to be very confused. The bus took me the wrong way. It doesn't, s I'm not seeing the stop going the other direction. Uh, and the GPS told me it's an hour until there's a bus going back. So I guess I'm walking. Check out these cows all looking at me like I'm crazy over there. Can't blame them. Feeling a little crazy, but it's what it is, I guess. Yo, I'm tired of this. It's been a rough day. I'm missing that uh, first bus because it was confusing where it stopped. To catching this one, taking me the wrong way, trying to walk back. Be late for uh, opening of things. I was trying to make the most of today, but this is what it is. Let's see how things go. Walking back, we'll walk up to Gruyere, because clearly you can't figure out the buses facing the right direction, make you turn and go the wrong way. But here's what it is. Do the best I can. Wanted to share some of the challenges with you. It's freezing too, that's, that's a little uncomfortable. And these are all farms, so it smells like cow. Let's just say that. All about the sights along the way though, right? Here's a uh, sign for Gruyere. Maybe we'll take some pictures of that time. We went the wrong way and there was no bus back for an hour. Ah, my legs are killing me right now. I will say, did some jog in there. It's been a busy couple of months. <laughs> At least the last month or so, even in Switzerland has been busy, so. Just trying to keep them going for the rest of this walk. It's nice sights, but wouldn't recommend walking it. Here's a little lakefront along our walk, one of those bridges. We're pretty much right off the road here. It's just road and I guess there's a sidewalk now on the opposite side. Maybe I can switch over there. But uh, it's just road and then grass and the waters and stuff. So it's a little tricky. All right, y'all, let's try this again. Up that path over that way is Gruyere. So we are hoofing it. We're walking it here. Uh, train just passed us. Cars were on their way. Now we are on our way up the hill to Gruyere. And my thought was, you know, it's uphill, so let's uh, let's take the bus. But um, now the bus is 20 minutes from here up the hill. I may as well just walk it. Let's do that. So the lesson is, you got to not only look at which way the bus is traveling but also with the sign posted. Because in some places, they'll make the sneaky old U-turn and then <laughs> after the stop, start going the opposite way. So you can't just look, hey, I'm going this way. Let me catch the bus on this side of the road. Read, placard. On the way up the hill, take a look at these beautiful sights. Indeed, it's winter time, feeling the Christmas spirit. Thanks to the snow. Glad I caught a bit of it. It's actually kind of nice to warm myself up a bit. <laughs> but that's enough snow for now. I must admit, it's a beautiful little quaint stroll up the hill, climb up the hill to Gruyere. Quiet town, quiet walk, which is nice. But again, a bit out of breath anyways. That jog alongside the road was not relaxing. So, yes. <sighs> Try to take it slow. This is a cool little, what is it? Bell tower type, uh, bell house type, right there behind me. And we've got a map as well. Gruyere this way. We're very close now, less than 10 minutes walk. Let's check it out. Here it is. La Maison de Gruyere, that's where we came from, right? Cheese factory. Up this way, there's that museum, which not so much what I'm in for. The chateau, that's what I'm in for. And I want to check out the bar. The, not the museum for Geiger, but his bar. Super, super cool looking. So we'll see how that goes. Uh, church might be nice to see too. So this is good information. And always get you that full frontal of the buildings as well. So here's your full frontal. That little bell tower type. Oh, it even says wash closets now that I think about it. So for here, we walk up this way, which we're about to do. There'll be some right there, and if we keep going up, there'll be some as well. Nice! Thanks, Gruyere. Doesn't hurt. In case you're wondering why I put the sunglasses on, it is getting brighter, although it's also snowy. But the snow is getting a little harder, almost like hail, and it's starting to hit me in the face. 
I'm like, I'm gonna take a little shield, hail shield on my eyes. Uh, but it's snow, so, but it just felt a little more like ice or hail. So, a little bit of cover, but it's beautiful sights, I gotta say, as you look out at it. Although I can appreciate it with sunglasses too. It is, it is a little bright. Here is your view of the stroll. It's more relaxing now because it got flatter. That's nice. We had the, all the climb up front, so got that taken care of. <laughs> and uh, we'll make our way. Take a look at that beautiful view all around us. Snow is really coming down now, but wow, so nice to see Bruyere. The other towns too, from a distance, looking down at some of the open space, because I think this is just Gruyere, right? These are all other towns. Long way, but it's nice view from Gruyere, how about that? Here it is, y'all, medieval town, city, medieval Gruyere. Let's check it out. Looking closer, it lists some highlights. You can see they've got the same castle right there. Geiger Museum, uh, Tibet Museum. I didn't know about the Tibet Museum. So I guess maybe that's what they were trying to tell me below. Here's your church. I still don't know what La Calvary is, the fifth one, <laughs> mm, but cool. Almost missed this giant cello here. Check that out, rock and roll cello. And you have a tourism office right here. Not sure if they're open, but we'll take a peek before we keep walking. All right, so they're not open for another 15 minutes, and that is all right, as we look for some of these other stops. Up this way, we have Chocolatiere de Gruyere. It's the one I thought we had downstairs. Oops, I almost tripped here. <laughs> so watch your step. And below, uh, it sounds like they've got hot wine down there too. People playing in the street. It's a nice looking town. Okay, I've got myself a dark chocolate, hot cocoa, a hot chocolate from um, the Chocolatiere. De Gruyere. I'm excited to give it a shot. I didn't really speak too much English, but it was enough to figure out there were three types of hot cocoa. You had this one, the dark, the milk, and the white. So we're going to try this. He said this was the best, and we'll give it a shot. You don't often see three options for hot chocolate, so cheers. Let's hope it's good. Hmm. Interesting. It's mild, not too chocolatey. Um, yeah. Not bad. Not gonna lie, I'm tempted <laughs> by a vin chaud maison. I know that means hot wine, so maybe I'll come back for that later. Let's check out a bit more first of Gruyere. Small town, one street, but it should be easy to knock out while we're here. I almost feel like the hot drinks are essential out here this time of year because uh, it's so cold. <laughs> so it's hot, it's a beverage, we'll take it. It's nowhere near as good as the lint hot chocolate, I will say. That was probably the best hot chocolate I've ever had up in uh, Jungfrau, at the top of Europe, if you didn't see that one. Uh, here's a restaurant, the Remparts. That one's opens earlier. Um, what am I even looking for? <laughs> so we'll keep warm while we figure it out. All right, I realize I'm not that far in yet. So there's the church just up ahead. We gotta check out the, uh, the castle, and we gotta check out that bar. Those are the two, I think, essential ones. So here it is, Gruyere, in the middle, right around that medieval center point, pretty close to the church. You can see everything, I think. Pretty equally distant here and beautiful. Nice town. I don't think it changes very much, but it's nice to see. Really nice to see the front of this church here. I believe they're telling me it's on the right. The chateau's on the left. Uh, there's, there's a lot, quite frankly. <laughs> so let me start with the chateau direction because I got this coffee now in hand. A few more shopping streets right around here. Some shopping taking place right up this way, I think, the chateau, which was one of the big items we wanted to see. So we'll start there with our cocoa or our Heise Chocolat, and uh, see how it is. Ooh, and here is the Geiger Bar here. Uh, Museum Bar, HR Geiger. Yes, yeah, so we're gonna come back for that one. Oh, yeah, and we'll come back for pictures and such. Here is the Stupa Auchorten. I don't know what that is, but... Oh, Tibet Museum, I was gonna say. <laughs> yeah, it looks like it's... Uh... Let's go with Tibetan. I think that's probably the most appropriate word right now. Here is the Chateau de Gruyere, just ahead. We've made it, although the gates look closed. <laughs> so we'll see if we can get in. Or should I say, the gates are open, but the doors are closed. Is that where I buy tickets up there? Do I have to go in here to ask somebody? I am not sure. Right now, doing a bit of wandering. We'll figure it out. It's probably, oh wow, here's another Grand Tour sign. Always love to find these. Grand Tour of Switzerland, Gruyere. Perfect. Good catch, Dave. You're gonna catch all. Grand Tour signs. I don't think I can get myself in there, but I can get close. All right, real nice to see 
that right there. I don't think there's too many views uh, from the outside, accessible, maybe there are. Um, but first, let me just try the door because it's snowing. We buy ourselves a ticket, walk around there, then maybe check out the outside and the best, best views from out here. I don't think I've done a castle in Switzerland. I've told this is like the best one. So if I'm gonna do one, this seems to be the place. That's why I'm putting it over the Calle chocolate facility because we did lint. And we shall see how this one goes. You can see the arrow is pointing us up this way. They're telling us the prices too, which is great. We'll buy that ticket when we get up there. Oh, and some photo spots along the way. Maybe I'll take one more from right here <laughs> at the back of that Switzerland sign. Some of these other sites. Oh, if I'm gonna suffer the colder weather, this is what it's for, y'all. See, the beauty of Switzerland has been beautiful. Pros and cons of every place I've been. Maybe, I'll talk about it more at a later date. Would you like to hear about that? But let's, uh, let's head in here. My taste away, by the way, I didn't think about that man. I thought it was like takeaway. Anyways, oh, here we are, pictures up here. And then we'll head inside. Wow. This is a lovely view as well, this perspective right here. You can see, looking down at the street down that way, you've got this church right here. It's probably the one for us to do later. Love to see it, Gruyere, and we're gonna head right in. This is our Einskong, our entrance. <laughs> so the snow is pouring down now. Everybody's hiding under cover in order to get their pictures. Uh, but I go out this way. I'm not really sure how I navigate it out here. Yeah, it, it does look like, look, it's chunky snow, right? That's hail. Anyways, we'll get some photos out here. You can hear the snow hitting me, probably. And we'll take a look around and enjoy it. By the way, this may be our directions. Um, oh, I have to, you know what? She handed it to me. <laughs> Through that way. Oh yeah, and then we'll be inside. That will be cool to see. And we'll come back to the gift shop at the end. A few photos out here and make our way. Y'all, it's about the views you've got down that way. I mean, can you imagine if this was your chateau? You were, you know, Mr. or Mrs. Gruyere, or Ms. Gruyere, or any other Gruyere in the family. <laughs> Can you imagine this? Take a look. Beautiful little park they've got here. The benches sit out with all your family and friends. And look at this beautiful view ahead of us. Let me show you that full frontal perspective. But wow, that's nice. This isn't the museum part. <laughs> this is just like a viewing deck. But why not take a look? Oh, beautiful indeed. I'm sure it'd be nice uh, to stand for a while on a warmer day, but it's actually really beautiful in, in the cold too. So I'm not, I'm not trashing the cold. I'm just saying <laughs> it's cold. There you are, ladies and gentlemen, the full frontal looking down at the beautiful town of Gruyere or other towns. Again, it seems like Gruyere like gave the name, so they all shared the name, but, but Gruyere is just like the street, I think, really, that we just came from, so it's nice. I do have to give the woman in there who's working some credit. You know, I'm like, oh, English? Parlez-vous anglais? No, no. And the one woman's like, oh, yeah, I speak a little bit of English. Oh, I'm like, okay, great. <laughs> and then I'm like, oh, well, sprechen Deutsch? And she's like, she starts talking German and Spanish, and she had that ready to go. So some, some credit is due. That was nice. Ability to uh, speak multiple languages. It's nice to know. Nice to be able to speak with people and appreciate them. That's a cool site, too. Wanted to get a picture of this for you. Uh, we'll check out that little church. They've got their own little cathedral. That's pretty awesome. And we'll head inside because it's gold. Alrighty, y'all, take a look at this. Oh, this is probably an outhouse, actually, now that I think about it. Fancy one, though. In case, uh, I don't know, in case it's too stinky for inside. <laughs> Here's your little uh, cathedral out back. Although it looks like it's closed, we'll take a peek in there from a distance. We'll head inside. Quick little peek out back here. That's amazing to have this uh, private little uh, prayer area too. You've got to appreciate they have that on site at the castle. All right, and let me go in this side door just in hopes of warming up a bit because I think I went in, or that would have been the way on the other side. So it says visit. We'll go in the visit before we freeze our fingers. So we are inside now, and this is the kitchen following our guide here. This is number two. I don't know how they keep it so warm in here. It's really, really nice. Um, taking a look around that old-time-fashioned castle kitchen. And you can see they've got three floors for us to enjoy. There's an audio guide, but you do it from your phone. And for me, I prefer the separate ones because <laughs> I'm videoing from my phone. But that's all right. And appreciate the kitchen here, as well as uh, all of the sights of the castle. As we traverse these little holes here... Uh, takes us into the next room. And by the way, there's no uh, there's no Wi-Fi as far as I can tell. 
I can ask her, but if your cell service is like mine, I've been throttled, as I call it. I only get so many uh, gigabytes of good, high-quality data overseas. Uh, I can't really do the audio guide, but this is the guard room. Uh, very cool to see. As you can see from some of the decor, brightly lit. I can give you a narration if you'd like. In the Middle Ages, access to the guard room was via spiral staircases or through the door leading to the walk or the wall walk. Brightly lit by the window that was enlarged in the late 15th century, the room originally had a wooden floor that retained as much as possible of the heat from the large fireplace. <laughs> Located at the foot of the keep, this space was probably set aside for the Count's guards. So Count Gruyere, maybe. By the way, they also have kids' tours, which is really nice uh, for, like, the sixes and for the threes, which is cool. Oh, and this door appears to be open. I'm going to give it, like, a light. I don't think it is. Look at that lock on there. No, that's not open. Um, but cool to see. Guard room again. It looks like you've got some, uh, some like, some gates and some grates. Some grates and some great stuff. Oh, I'm on a wood floor now. I just observed that by stepping on it. <laughs> it certainly sounds wooden. But I wanted to show you the views out the window. I figure you might always enjoy those views. That being said, touching the window is very cold. It's wirklich kalt, in case you're wondering. It's muy frío. <laughs> Listen in multiple languages. Dave K. All right, now we have the next. The staircase actually leads us, is number four, which leads us to the upstairs sections, floor two and three. We shall see how those go. No flash. This is good. Backpacks, don't wear them in the front either. Uh, I'm not sure what that is. Don't touch anything. Maybe. But here is your escalier office, spiral staircase. Up we go, mine fundus. Here we go, up the stairs. It does look like a nice handrail. I imagine you can touch the handrail, uh, but there's a, a hand showing not touching things, so I'm not really sure. But here's your view outside the side window as well. And here we are, floor number two. Now this reminds me of that castle in the United Kingdom that we saw, because it has all this armor. Nice to see the armor here. And it's nice that I seem to be getting a good bit of space on my own to explore this too. This is the Burgundian room. I'm not really sure what that's about, but I will read it <laughs> and I will be informed. And you may have already read it. If you didn't pause and read it, you can. And if you don't, then that is cool too. But I'm gonna go take a look. Okay, y'all, I am now informed. I didn't read the last sentence yet. Let me, let me actually do that. Really, really interesting. So the Burgundy Capes, that's the Burgundian room, has Burgundy Capes right there. They were part of the booty seized in 1476 during the Battle of Merton by the Confederate troops uh, with their formidable halberdiers and pikemen. Those are uh, halberds, aren't they? Isn't that the name of the weapon, I believe? Made of luxurious materials, such as black silk velvet and brocades of gold thread. I'm not really even sure what a brocade is, um, but they're fancy. That's the moral of the story. And they bear the logos of some duchies. The duchies who were super powerful at one point in history. Nice to see these. I like them. Yeah, I, I would wear that, indeed. Why not, right? It would look fancy. Have you seen me wearing this? You know what is super funny? <laughs> I just realized the burgundy is not a reference to the color, but to the place. <laughs> but you know what? Maybe they are connected. I also was looking at this. And I was trying to figure out the difference between the green, the blue, and the red. It's the castle throughout the centuries. Really, really cool. The direction they want us to walk it. So we're going to step out here. We just got to the second floor. We're going to walk this floor, go upstairs, and enjoy the remainder. I am having some trouble finding the uh, the corridor here on the second floor. Um, you see the staircase? Maybe it opens up in two places. Maybe we gotta go upstairs to that, yeah. All right, that is correct. We have the remainder. Oh, and then this is roped off. This way, they're directing us. That's good, okay. Uh, corridor, yes, we are here in the corridor. We've arrived. <laughs> Welcome to the corridor. And I am not sure what this space is for. All right, y'all, that's it. I live here now, right, right in this little corridor in the corridor. <laughs> Bye. You have, oh, okay, yes, this will take us into seven, eight, and nine. I'm quite sure. First, let me explore 
the corridor you have this dresser i mean it's a massive space can you again can you imagine living in this space but it's also so old so historical no enter this way i'm gonna go out that way later um and there's some in interesting information about this hand which i clearly have to read i don't know if i should narrate for you but you can read that if you like i'm like in the wall art here in the next room room number seven here and this one is the bailiff's room very interesting he's got a table set up for some fancy meals perhaps or some discussions all right so see the bailiff's room there is when the uh, castle the chateau was held by uh, some Freiburg. Very interesting. I think this is part of the history change here, right? The green part. The Freiburg maybe added on to the castle. But if we're here in room number eight, this must be uh, someone else yet again. An artist's colony in the 1800s. And so we'll read about that here as well. So, really cool to read about here. Uh, after the uh, barons, what was this, Bailiffs of Freiburg, uh, became an artist colony. It was taken over again at some point, and then eventually Freiburg brought it back, or the county brought it back, to then become the museum that we see today, I believe. So, cool, cool kind of history here, and you can see the differences in styles between the rooms. One more look here at that, number eight. The Salon Corot. Corot room. Again, uh, more on that. Artist colony time, invited some artists here, and I guess you can see uh, that they spent some time here. Look at the beautiful artwork on the walls. It's nice designs. Take a look here at, I believe it was the Count's room. Yeah, Count's room right here. And again, really interesting to learn this history as we go. This was talking about like the rediscovery of the historical rooms. Uh, oh, wow. I guess maybe this is that graffiti that I had, I had read about, but it's like historical graffiti. So they've like protected it. Um, it's like, don't draw on it. Uh, you've got this bed chamber, what it looks like, for the, the count. <laughs> it's so funny how they all sleep in such small beds. <laughs> we today, just regular people sleeping in much bigger beds. What, I got a queen-size bed that makes that thing look like, that must be a full, probably, or a, a double, as they would call it here, <laughs> for a count. And it is attached to, through here, the legends room. Looks dark in there, and uh, we'll see what we can capture. Seems like there's some other parties now around us. Um, but we shall see what we can share with you in there as well. Hmm. Very cool to see. Very cool to see that Legends room in there. I'm going to see if I can come back later to listen to that thing, that audio whatever guide. Because, um, you know, I'm tight on time. I don't want to uh, sweat. So let's see if we can head upstairs to floor number three to catch some of the sights up there. Assuming I can make my way back down. Oh, wow. So this thing just keeps going around. This is floor two and a half, maybe? Ah, <laughs> oh, yes, here we are, 11A. So right up the stairs, 11A, but there's more stairs. It's really funny. The Grand Tour Room. This is very cool. Amazing that uh, Switzerland in the 16th century was no more than a stop in a Grand Tour by British people. And then 18th century, Alpine, what did they say on that wall? I'm gonna go take a closer look again. Alpine Paradise becomes a destination of choice for European travelers. Literature and uh, travel guides recommend a visit to Gruyere's Castle, contributing to the tourism boom and fashioning the imagery that persists to this day. And so perhaps we have some, uh, some of those testaments right here, right? Look at that. A map of some of this region, <laughs> I believe. Can't really read that, but um, it does. And it looks like ancient text, right? La Suisse. I'm going to Switzerland, recounting Gruyere. I'm going to take my laps around and read through some of these. I want to make sure you get a chance as well. Switzerland for travelers. Wow, look at that. And they have it, uh, it looks like, in a couple of different, I don't know, colors. That's a Swiss flag. What is that? A trumpet. Uh, you tell me. If you know, I'd love to hear, actually. Uh, we've got Lach Liman, which is also a lake of Geneva. It's crazy, actually. I just uh, realized today, too, that separates not just France, like, around some like here and here but like the whole south side i believe so really really cool to get a clear picture of switzerland how it's divided books of switzerland but also uh, just appreciate the beauty and the sights all the sights to see you know what i feel like we can probably go out here but i don't know do i want to how cold is this gonna be we'll take a quick beat oh man it is cold indeed but here is the peak out this side window oh my gosh look at that garden that's incredible! Wow! Certainly worth a stop over on this one.
you can see it's all frozen over down there behind me, but still beautiful sights across the board. Absolutely worth a stop off to appreciate. Look at that mountain too. That looks beautiful. Misty on the top, foggy up top. You get a nice view of the side of it. That's nice. So what do you think? Is it the alpine paradise they describe it as? Yeah, it's certainly grown on me more and more as we've been out here. Although I'm freezing. <laughs> I'm not giving that up. It's still cold. And did we finish the book tour? I'm not 100% sure. So you can continue that if you would like. <laughs> Reading through all this information. Excuse the door closing behind me. And some postcards. Wish you were here. I like it. You know what else is interesting is that door up there. I wonder what that used to be used for. Doesn't look like it's used today, but interesting to see. Oh, wow. Cool story in the legends room about the, uh, the count here. Oh, oh, there was a second. <laughs> I didn't even notice. There's a second one. I could have sat down and listened to it earlier too. But hey, you live and learn. Nice to, to hear all this information to learn about the chateau here. Um, and my time is, is flying by quickly, I must admit. So we're going to keep making our way up to the third floor yet again and see the rest. Really nice castle here, though. This is, you have the music room, which is really nice to see. And a few more rooms up here. I think you get the general idea. I'll take a quick peek at this one. 13 here for us, let's see, is the, I will figure it out. You can enjoy the Fernet room. I'm not really sure what a Fernet is. So I'm going to take a moment and read it, figure it out. <laughs> oh, the Fernet is the painter. He was the painter who painted a lot of these murals. That's nice. For some reason, the hunting room here is uh, nice and toasty. Uh, I'm not sure what to make of that. <laughs> oh, is that a heater? <laughs> that must be what it is. That makes more sense. But here's your hunting room with the memory of pavilions, hunting lodges owned by the Counts of Gruyere. Take a look at the medallion room here. Uh, it's nice carpets and paintings on the walls, but I love, <laughs> always love the metal, steel and bronze shaped into currency or just these giant, again, plaques, medallions. It's just, it's beautiful uh, metal work, you know? For some reason, I really enjoy that. Uh, it's like the, uh, the shininess to it, the design, the detail. It's just so nice to check this out. So, you know, this one to me is an appealing one to stop by and check out the medallions. And I love how there's stained glass in every window, by the way. This room is pretty remarkable. If you take a look around here, the knight's room, you can see uh, dedicated in the memory of the Counts of uh, Gruyere, uh, but uh, lots of conflict, lots of combat depicted in the paintings on these walls. It's beautiful artwork, though. I really got to give it to them. This room is probably one of the most beautifully designed, in my opinion, because just, again, I love all the little details. I love all the artwork on the walls. Um, certainly worth a stop if you are in the chateau. Let's stop by the knight's room for a moment. All right, unfortunately, our last warm stop here, <laughs> the Bond Bovi Gallery. So a young painter from Geneva enters Gruyere Castle and does some artwork, I guess is the short of it. Here's his hallway. He's got some nice work, gotta give it to him. So interesting, again, to learn about the changing history, changing hands of the castle over the years. Uh, there's quite a bit to this castle indeed. I'm glad I took the time to check it out. And uh, of course, I gotta head up that bar, you'll see later. 
And the whole interior upstairs was part of this artist's colony, but the outside part was part of the uh, bailiffs of Freeburg. So, so interesting what was uh, put in at different times. Here is your cannon, defensive cannon, I'm sure. And it's a nice, honestly, internal walkway too. It's just nice how they've kept the wood in such good shape over all these years. You gotta give some credits here. Okay, and just this way, we have the prisoner's tower. It was nice to see those clocks on the wall over there. Interesting, uh, I think I showed you that. I'm actually not sure I was walking by them pretty quick. Uh, there's downstairs. There you go, you can see a better shot from here while they're doing their thing over there. And down this way is your uh, prisoner's tower. We're gonna check out the prisoner's tower, unless that's where we're at right now. It's a little confusing. Actually, you know what? That was probably the prisoner's tower right there. Now that I think about it, it's just like a closed door, perhaps? I do not know. Let me check downstairs. Actually, just peeked through a window on our right and saw what looked like a tower. Wonder if there's an excess point. Now, here's more galleries, although we'll take a look around the galleries since we're here. Oh, in there, some more artwork. <laughs> it's a little uh, closet with artwork. Some ceramics and some paintings, which are nice. Okay, you have an exit that way. And <laughs> more sealed building. Okay, well, that was uh, galleries two, at least, or galleries one. Let me see if I can quickly drop back upstairs, find the prisoner's tower, and then we'll have the first floor garden. Here was an internal kind of tower thing that I saw. I'm not sure if that's the prisoner's tower. Didn't really see a sign for it, so I'm taking one last peek around. And we'll look at the galleries that they were by as well. Uh, so you can see that clock from a frontal view. No, I have no idea where that uh, prisoner's tower is, number 19. But a cool clock. Oh, no, I caught it. It's right here. Access closed for safety reasons. Doesn't have the number visible, but it was just kind of roped off, <laughs> so I ignored it. Um, but that probably would be it right there. That does make sense. Here is Temporary Exhibition A, which we're coming across here. Um, it's indoors, so I figured <laughs> let me stop off and check this one quickly before the ramparts, which are outside and therefore more cold. And then we shall see last bit of this. We'll call this a sleeping monk here. Check this one out. Really, really cool to see him lay in there. That's, that's lifelike in the face, at least. One more to share. Interesting stained glass window looking thing here in the exhibit, which is really cool. Not sure what's going on with his face like that, but it's nice to see that too, before we check out the rest. And here is our temporary exhibition B. Again, I like the different doors. Oh, this smells interesting. Very interesting smell in this one. Not sure what to make of that. <laughs> Take a look at, maybe this is the smell, is the materials, the cloth, like the wool and things like that. I don't know, but uh, not sure what's going on on some of these walls, quite frankly. But interesting costumes, outfits, a spiky wall, not sure what that's about. You got pigs race and that is super cute. I would totally watch some pigs race. And that is this one, y'all. And one more direction, it's the ramparts. This way, we'll walk up those stairs. That beautiful view in that cathedral we saw earlier behind us. Looks like the day's getting nicer too, maybe warmer. And we'll check this out. Check out this view from the ramparts. You look out the back side of it and you got the town. You look out this front side of it and you have that beautiful floral thing that we saw earlier. So that's really, really cool. See if we can get some great photos with it if we walk all the way around the ramparts. And we'll also enjoy the continued sights outside what I'm going to call the windows of the ramparts. Although we're not indoors. It's not sealed. So it's cold. It continues to be cold. Ooh, check this out. So maybe we will get... Oh, that's a nice photo too. I got to take off a glove to snap photos. But this looks cool too. A little indoor space here in the ramparts. Honestly, I'm not really sure what a rampart is. I almost feel like it's in our national anthem too, isn't it? But yet, I still have no idea, so. <laughs> Here we are. Look at that beautiful flower view. Love that. We got our floral view. And finishing off this area before we make our way onwards to that bar and to Bayern. I have to do Bayern. It's a must. Again, Switzerland is about the sights, am I right? So there's a look down at, I'm pretty sure that is proper Gruyere right there in that little, uh, uh, what is it, Cathedral we thought, thought about dropping in? I'm not sure I will. I heard it was pretty small. Um, I'm trying to make the most of the time, but we shall see. 
Moving onwards now, gotta check out that bar. The bar is a must. <laughs> Here is a nice view out at the floral garden as well. That's nice to see. Gotta crouch down a bit to get that best perspective from here. But it's nice again as we move onwards. And since it's cleared up a bit, not snowing, get some more beautiful views looking around this fantastic pano down at Gruyere, 830 meters up before we move onwards. Wow, beautiful. Great stuff. Thanks, Gruyere. All right. Thanks for the fun, Castle. It was a nice time. Really enjoyed checking this one out. Right, let's move on. All right. Back at the museum bar. H.R. Geiger here. Let's give it a shot. It's super cool to see. Decided to grab a seat, and I'm not sure if it's a count. Take a look at the amazing museum bar here. Uh, it's like you're inside an alien. As they say, there's an alien right there on the wall. Uh, I realize I'm sitting over here. Maybe I should sit closer to the, um, well, there weren't many seats open, so <laughs> this'll do. I put my bag on the other alien spine right there, and we'll get to enjoy this aesthetic while we have some food and drink. Really, really cool, I've gotta say. Pictures look awesome, unique bar experience. Indeed, you can see that design all around us. Yeah, it's a cool spot. So we'll see what sounds good food and drink wise. I don't know what they got, but <laughs> it's just for the aesthetic. Here is the menu in front of me. And again, here's a look at some of these other chairs that I'm looking at. Those ones spin at the bar. That's really cool. See the ceiling it looks like spine as well. The alien on the wall right there. Uh, show you some pictures while we're waiting for the food situation. And yeah, cool, cool decorations all around us. All right, I have moved a bit. The bar seats opened up and I was moving to grab those, but then they got grabbed. So here I am instead at uh, the seats that they left behind. You can see more alien stuff from uh, when they were seated here. So that's nice, more of an internal spot and feel. If you look at the bar itself, it's really beautifully designed. I feel like it's probably one of the best parts right there. Um, but again, it's really nice to be immersed in it. Nice to sit further in. Wow, it's, it's unique indeed for a bar. Take a look at the floor here, y'all. I'm just now noticing that. Uh, so really, really nice. I asked them how long it would take, because I want to be quick. Um, but awesome to see alien style flooring as well. We're gonna have a hot chocolate and we'll have a croque monsieur, that'd be nice. Again, really cool to check this one out. You have the hot cocoa right here. That's what I got, is the hot cocoa. Again, really cool to check this one out. You have the hot chocolate, which I got right here. And I'm waiting for a pro connoisseur. And I didn't realize <laughs> it was like two bucks for whipped cream. It doesn't make a lot of sense. But, uh, or maybe it's more like a cafe. Who knows? Actually, maybe that's what I got. Chocolate Venoise. I'm not really sure. Anyways, uh, I'm sure it'll be tasty. But really, it's the aesthetic. It's all about, right? So I'm glad I dropped in this one just to check it out before we make our way. And here is your Croque Monsieur. Pretty basic looking, you know, uh, nothing special here, but it's really about the aesthetic again. So I'm glad I'm checking it out. While I'm having some basic meals, it's, it's worth a shot. And take a look at this table right here, really center one, beautiful with that kind of flying architecture. Uh, I opened up, so I figured I'd share it with you real quick. All right, one last look here uh, in the back section as we're making our way upwards. That was nice, nice to have, nice to try. See your cool ceiling designs, all kinds of stuff. And uh, you've got his picture there in the back, too. Uh, H.R. Geiger um, by the bar. That's nice. It's been a cool spot. All right, now making our way outwards from Gruyere. It's been nice. A bit later than I originally planned, but that is all right. Some snow on my face there. <laughs> um, yeah, I think we'll have enough time. And there's a lot of indoor things in Bern, too. So I, I need to check it out to see a few things there. But I think I'll be all right. We'll see. And you know I always like to see the churches, but unfortunately this one is closed. October is when it closes, it seems. Um, I guess it's maybe just for tourism, <laughs> because otherwise it should be open, right? But anyways, it's been fun, Gruyere, thanks. Maybe I'll grab that Wien Schrod takeaway. It's certainly picking up a holiday feel, though, which is beautiful in Gruyere. You can hear the Christmas music, lots more people out and about, snow. I think this is real snow, <laughs> so certainly nice. One site I missed earlier, You've got Terrasi Panoramic. It's a restaurant, seems like. Panoramic restaurant. And people just kind of walking up the sides of these ledges, I guess, to get a view. That's pretty nice. Get a view uh, out into the town. I, I don't think it's necessarily any better than the one we got from the uh, chateau. So I feel pretty good on that front. But nice to see. Let us make our way. Yeah, certainly a fun, jovial spirit out here, which I'm loving. We make our way onwards. It's a fun town, fun little town. Difficult to get to, not a whole lot, but it's fun for sure. 
So, uh, we found out they don't take cart. It did seem like a really good price, got to admit. But um, perhaps that's part of the reason why. Don't take cart. So I won't be getting any hot wine. For now, at least. And um, that is okay. And uh, we are going to catch the bus, which should be somewhere around here to our next spot. So it was fun at Bruyere. There is where we um, where we got on the wrong bus in particular, but uh, the stop and that uh, mix on the cheese factory. So we make our way.